Sesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato jaya mudhirayat Nista prayeshu vabhadreshu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati utama shloke Bhaktir bhavati naishtiki Krishna Swadamo Pagate Dharma Gyana Dibisaha Kalo Nishtadrisham Mesha Pura Narto Jano Jataha We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 13 entitled Brahma Stealing the Boys and Calves, text number 51. Atmadi Stamba Paryante Murti Madbis Chara Charai Nritya Githadi Anekarhai Pritak Pritag Upasita Atmadi Stamba Paryantair Murti Madbis Characharai Nritya Gita Dhyanai Karai Pritak Pritak Upasita Atmad Bistamba Paryanta Murti Mad Bischaracharai Nritya Gita Dhyanai Karai Pritak Pritag Upasta Atma Bistamba Paryantaya Murti Mad Bischaracharai Nritya Git Adyani Karkai Pritak Pritag Upasta
आत्म अधि स्तंभ पार्यंताय from lord brahma to the insignificant living entity murti adbi assuming some form chara charai both the moving and the non moving nritya gita adi an eka arhai by many varied means of worship such as dancing and singing pritak pritak differently upasita who were being worshiped translation all beings both moving and non moving from the four headed lord brahma down to the most insignificant living entity had taken forms and were differently worshiping those vishnu murtis according to their respective capacities with various means of worship such as dancing and singing purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shrila prabhupad shrila prabhupad ki innumerable living entities are engaged in different types of worship of the supreme according to their abilities and karma but everyone is engaged jivar swarupa hai krishnera nitya das there is no one who is not serving therefore the mahabhagavata the topmost devotee sees everyone as being engaged in the service of krishna only himself does he see as not engaged we have to elevate ourselves from a lower position to a higher position and the topmost position is that of direct service in vrindavan but everyone is engaged in service denial of the service of the lord is maya ekala ishwara krishna ar sabhritya yare yaichi na chaya setai che khare nitya only krishna is the supreme master and all others are his servants as krishna desires everyone dances according to his tune there are two kinds of living entities the moving and the non moving trees for example stand in one place whereas ants move why ants <laughs> we're having a a lot of ants these days <laughs> ants move they sure move brahma saw that all of them down to the smallest creature had assumed different forms and were accordingly engaged in the service of lord vishnu one receives a form according to the way one worships the lord in the material world the body one receives is guided by the demigods this is sometimes referred to as the influence of the stars as indicated in bhagavad gita 327 by the words prakrite kriyamanani according to the laws of nature one is controlled by the demigods all living entities are serving krishna in different ways but when they are krishna conscious their service is fully manifest as a flower in the bud gradually fructifies and yields its desired aroma and beauty 
So when a living entity comes to the platform of Krishna consciousness, the beauty of his real form comes into full blossom. That is the ultimate beauty and the ultimate fulfillment of desire. Om Magyana Timirandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Bandeham Shri Gura Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Bitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So we're hearing this description of Lord Brahma taking away Lord Krishna's cows and cowherd boyfriends and returning back to see that Krishna had taken the place of all the cows and cowherd boys. And as described here, we heard yesterday also, how the Lord revealed to Brahma Vishnumurtis, the form of the Lord or the super soul, manifested from each of the different uh, cowherd boys and cows. Not only that, but we're hearing today how all of these different Vishnu Murtis, they were all being worshipped. That all beings, all beings meaning all beings both moving and non-moving. And Prabhupada meant non-moving means the trees. So somehow the trees are also engaging. They're also coming to take part in the worship of this uh, Lord Vishnu, this Vishnu Murti form, or so many Vishnu Murti forms had appeared, and they're all being worshipped. Right? The four-headed Brahma down to the most insignificant living entity. Prabhupada mentions the ant and how they've all taken the, the taken forms and were differently worshipping those Vishnu Murtis according to their respective capacities with various means of worship such as singing and dancing so that's very nice I like when I read that I thought oh very nice singing and dancing is also worship of the Lord. Of course, we regularly perform singing and dancing in our Krishna consciousness movement because we are following Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. But here, in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, we see that when all the different living entities appeared there, 
by the arrangement of Lord Krishna and how they are worshipping all the Vishnu Murtis, that they are also singing and dancing. So it's not some new creation. Singing and dancing has been there since, well, it's, it's there in the spiritual world. So it, it's definitely going to be here also. It takes place in the material world. Even though Lord Brahma enacted this pastime with Lord Krishna before the beginning of Kali Yuga, and before the inauguration of the Sankirtan movement, but still they were singing and dancing. And also important point to note is that everyone was worshipping according to their capacities. Not everyone's the same. Prabhupada mentions like that in one of his purports. He talks about how his god brothers are also preaching on behalf of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. And there everybody is doing according to their means. You know, somebody's doing in a big way and some people are small. You know, I was listening to this one devotee, was it, I think Shabdahari, the one who is teaching, he's teach online preaching. You know, he's, uh, he knows about how to use the different online methods for preaching, for contacting people. And he's been giving uh, classes. He's, he did it one time, four or five classes, and he did it, and now he's just finishing the second time. And a lot of devotees all around the world, they've been logging in, they've been listening to his class, you know, what he wants you to do, to do the preaching. And he tells you, you know, you've got to have a Facebook page, you've got to have your own Facebook page, and then you've got to... You've got to go into all the different medias. There's one website where they have all written articles. And there's another website which is audio. What do they call it? Oh, okay. I, I don't know what they call it. But anyway, it's just sound. Just, you know. And another website is, uh, of course, Facebook is video. You know, video is very important people like to see. But not only, not everybody watch, you've got to have some written articles and you've got to have some audio files there and you know some people they just like to hear. And so he's encouraging the devotee. And there's another website, it's all questions and answers. Questions and answers. And they have many, many questions. In fact, the first thing we have to do, the very first class, he said, you have to pick a topic and then break it up into ten subheadings and then write ten questions on each of the subheadings. So that's a hundred, one hundred questions. And, and then the, and this, this, this way, you know, he's encouraging the devotees how to get into this uh, virtual preaching. Not just vir but using the different medias for preaching. So the, but the point is, on Facebook, some people, you know, they're small line, small time, you know, under a hundred. Less than a hundred, you know, is small time. But you've got people a thousand, and you've got people ten thousand and plus. You know, every time they go online, there'll be fifteen thousand people or twenty-five thousand people listening to them give class. You know, some people are really big time, you know. <laughs> you know, we think, wow, you got ten people at the class this morning, you know, it's a, a big crowd, you know. <laughs> but you go online and Facebook, they've got thousands of people listening to them, you know. I, I don't know how many people listen to Jai Pataka Maharaj's Facebook, but of course he has it translated into so many languages and it, it all adds up. But Point is, everybody according to their capacity. You know, some people are very powerful, very charismatic. They really attract a lot of people. And other people, you know, we're small time, you know. <laughs> I am small time. So it's, it's like that. But everybody according to their capacity. Just like when Lord Ramachandra was building the bridge to Lanka. Hanuman was coming with his big rocks and the little spider was coming with his little grains of dirt. 
And Hanuman is telling the spider, out of the way, come on, you're getting in the way. But Lord Ramachandra said, no, 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 this spider is also serving me. His service is also important. So the Lord has that vision. He sees everyone. It, it, it's not what we're giving so much, but it's what we're not giving, we used to say. It, it, the Lord notices more, not so much what you give, but what you don't give. You know, somebody may come to the temple and they may give, oh, they gave 2,000 rupees. Wow, big donation, 2,000. But, you know, the guy's a multimillionaire, you know, 2,000 rupees is peanuts for him, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so, it's not so much what we give, but what, what we keep for ourselves. Krishna notices that more. So our, our, according to our capacity, we want to give for the pleasure of Krishna. So devotional service is like that. It, it, we want to give the best to Krishna. And Prabhupada makes a point here in the purport, the main point is that everyone is serving Krishna. And he tell, talks about the Mahabhagavat who has that vision. He doesn't make distinction. He sees everybody engaged in Krishna's service. I was thinking of that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Yeyatamam prapajante tamstathaiva bhajameham mama vartman vartante manushyaparta sarvasha. As you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O Arjuna. People sometimes get puzzled. Uh, what is this? Everyone follows everybody? <laughs> is everyone a devotee? Well, according to this purport, everyone's serving Krishna. But some are serving through Maya. They're serving the, in the Maya potency. Not, well, of course, the majority, at least here in this world, the majority of people are serving we know there's far more souls in the spiritual world. We're in the minority in this material world. There's many more souls in the spiritual world. And they're all engaged in the service of Krishna fully. In this material world, however, we're bewildered by this material energy. I was reading one purport, Prabhupada describes it. I think it's Nectar of Instruction, he said that this Bahir Anga Shakti is third class energy. The third class energy. Just like you go on the train, if you go third class, you know, third class train in India, well, we know what it's like, right? We've been around long enough. We've been in India long enough, you know. You go third class, it's pretty rough. It may be economical, but it's pretty austere, <laughs> you know. If you get a seat, you're lucky, you know, you've got to share with other people. And so many other things are going on also. So the material energy is like that, third class. We're here in this world and we're bewildered by the material energy serving. We're serving. Everyone's doing service. Right? Somebody's serving the dog, somebody's serving the, the baby, somebody's serving the, the country, ser somebody, everyone's doing some kind of service. It's the nature of the living entity to be engaged in service. Prabhupada quotes a verse in the purport, Jivarswarupahaya Nitya Krishna Das. Everyone is the servant of Krishna. The point is, some people know it, that we're serving Krishna, and some don't. All right? Of course, far more, in this, in this world at least, the majority of people don't know. They're not aware. But they're, they're doing some kind of work. They're serving, they've got jobs, they're working here, they're wor taking care of their families, the mothers, cooking and cleaning, washing, all this. Service is all going on everywhere. But the Mahabhagavad, 
he sees everyone serving Krishna. That is his vision. That, but he thinks, only I'm not serving Krishna, I'm the one, I'm the fallen one. I'm the rascal, I'm not doing any service for Krishna. And so, this is a Mahabhagwat devotee. Of course, we want to become, at least we are encouraged as devotees, we should come to the Madhyam level, preachers. On the Madhyam platform, we make distinction. The Kanista, he thinks nobody's serving Krishna except him. <laughs> well, not exactly, but <laughs> Kanista, he sees Krishna in the temple. He doesn't see Krishna any other place. He thinks Krishna is only in the temple. So he doesn't preach. Roma Padaswami, I was listening. Roma Padaswami, one time, he was giving an example about Kanista. He was telling, he said he was, he was in the temple, I think it was Boston, and he was giving class one morning, and he was sitting giving class, and every morning this man used to come during the Bhagavatam class, you know, and it's a smaller temple room, devotees are all sitting there listening carefully, and then this one man comes in, rings the bell, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Everybody, you know, wake up everybody, you know. It rings a bell and he comes in, walks up to the front of the deity. Jai Radha Madhava, Jai Sri Krishna, you know, Bhagavan. Falls on the floor, starts reciting prayers, you know. The whole class is, has to wait for the man, you know, because he just comes to see the deity. He doesn't come to hear the Bhagavatam, he doesn't recognize the devotees there, he just comes to see the deity. And he, you know, all of his, his attention's on the deity. <laughs> so, you know, this devotion, but it's, that's what we would call the Kanista platform, you know. Madhyam, however, he makes distinction. He's got to see Krishna in the heart of all living entities. That's very important. That's a point which is made in Kapila Shiksha. That one who is worshipping the deity, he must also see the Lord in the heart of all living entities. Not only see Krishna in the temple, but see Krishna in the hearts of all living entities. So the Madhyama devotee has that vision and he makes distinction. And he distinguishes who is the innocent and who is the, who is the, the offender, the aparadi, the non-believer. And he won't approach the aparadi or the, the non-believer. He won't approach. Because if he goes to them, they will just become more offensive. So his treatment towards the the atheist or the non-believer is to neglect him. That is his mercy on such a person. He shows mercy by neglecting him and ignoring him. Just leave him and avoid him. Because if he will go there and preach to him, he would just become more offensive. He would just make more offenses. It doesn't do him any good and we don't want to hear it. So just ignore them. So the Madhyama devotee, he's going to make the distinctions. Of course, we have in our line of disciplic succession, we have the Babaji's. Gorkishore does Babaji. Jagannath does Babaji. Now the Babaji, oh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I was reading, Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, you cannot take Babaji un unless you have come to the level of Bhava. You have to be on the left platform of Bhava before you can actually take Babaji initiation. So uh, we have in our disciplic succession, we have these Babajis and we recognize them as great devotees. But they didn't preach. They're, they're, they were not really in the mood of preachers. But they did intense bhajan for the worship of Krishna. So everybody worships Krishna according to their different mood, their different natures. 
And Prabhupada also understood like that. He would engage people in different ways. For somebody, they got the job to go out, go to a new country, open up a preaching field. And somebody else, they got the job, go to the mountains, West Virginia, and make a farm and develop a community. Somebody got the job, stay in New York, develop the preaching field there, make devotees. Different people, somebody else is a painter. We have, you know, we had a number of artists, particularly in Prabhupada's time, because the artists were drawing the illustrations for Prabhupada's Bhagavatam. So I was listening to the memories, Prabhupada memories, and uh, but, uh, what's his name? The Bharadraj. Thank you, Prabhu. Bharadraj. Yeah, Bharadraj. Prabhu was talking, and he was describing. You know, Bharadraj was originally from Russia, and he'd come to America, brought up in America, but originally is Russian, and he could speak Russian, and he was thinking, you know, Prabhupada, maybe I should go to Russia and preach. I should give up the preaching because a lot of pre a big field there, a lot of people can become devotees. I think, you know, and I know Russian, I think it, maybe it would be good for me to go there and do some preaching. But Prabhupada said, no, it's, he said, by your painting, you're preaching to the whole world. He said, your art is preaching to the whole world. He said, you go to Russia, you just preach to some, a few people someplace, but by your painting, you're preaching to the whole world. So Prabhupada, he encouraged him to continue with his service, to paint these illustra illustrating the Srimad Bhagavatam and other books like that. So, point is, people have different capacities. Somebody's got, like Prabhupada had that capacity to go to the West and to establish a worldwide movement everywhere. And other God brothers are here in the Holy Dham and maybe they're maintaining a small center in Navadvip Dham and like that. No, Prabhupada didn't minimize their efforts. He saw everybody's serving Krishna according to their particular nature and their capacity. So that's the idea. We have to be open and appreciative of everyone's efforts in Krishna consciousness. That's uh, the kind of mood which I see coming out from this purport that we want to recognize everyone's serving they have the service mood, they have the ability to serve. We just want to try, somehow or other, bring them into Krishna. Do it, for, do it for Krishna, Prabhu. You're a good cook. Great. Cook for Krishna. So many artists, they're good painters. Paint for Krishna. Write for Krishna. Whatever we can, whatever talents we have, use it in the service of Krishna. So the Uttama Adhikari, he sees everyone engaged somehow or other in Krishna's service. Jagannath does Babaji, Gorkishore does Babaji, even the six Goswamis. The six Goswamis, they also took Babaji Vesh. They were Babaji initiation. They were not actually going for preaching. They were, they were more uh, chanting fixed number of rounds and Dandabhat Parikram round Govardhan Hill every day, Sanatana Goswami doing Dandabhat Parikram every day around the Govardhan Hill and, and th this is bhajan, right? This is not uh, Bhajananandi, Gostavanandi. This is not the mood of the Gostavanandi. Gostavanandi is go, go out for preaching. But uh, it's service to Krishna. It's, it's no different. If, if they're doing it in God, in Krishna consciousness, if the mood is to please Krishna, that's the idea, right? Whatever they do, if 
somebody is just, their mood is just to sit and chant Hare Krishna, just like Prabhupada said, in old age, maybe this, I think that it, it worked out, in old age, we come to old age, he said, you can go and sit in the holy dham and read the books of the Goswamis. Right? You travel and preach when you're young, and then in your old age, you come and sit in the holy dham and study the books of the Goswamis. I said this to Tamal Krishna Maharaj one time, you know. I said, why don't you just sit in the holy dham and read the books of the Goswamis? He said to me, he said, you know, he said, that's all I wanted to do. He said, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me. You know, they wanted him to do other th so many other things. So, anyway, I think uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur also did like that. But some people I do hear, though, although Bhaktivinoda had gone to Puri and he was residing in Puri for the final years of his life, I've heard it said that he wanted him to be put on a horse and that he would go for preaching somewhere. He couldn't walk anywhere, so put him on a horse and take me for preaching. So he's, although he was there in, in Jagannath Puri in the Babaji dress, but his mood was still for preaching. He wanted to preach. Of course, he had written this uh, Namhat, all about uh, Namhata, the marketplace of the holy name, and how to organize the preaching. And, he dedicated like that. He'd preach so much in the villages and everywhere. He wanted to see everyone have the opportunity to be Krishna conscious. That's the mood for the devotee preacher. The Uttama Adhikari, he's thinking they're already Krishna conscious. There's no preaching to be done. They're already Krishna. They're already serving Krishna. So therefore, just let me chant Hare Krishna. Let me do my bhajan. Let me keep chanting. So, this point about all living entities coming and they're all engaging in the worship, indicating that all living entities are part and parcel of the Lord and they're all his servants. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhya Kabunai. All the living entities, they all have love of Krishna in them. And it's actually displayed here in this pastime how all these different creatures, moving and non moving, they're all devotees, they're all parts and parcels of Krishna. We hear the example about St. Francis of Assisi. He, was, he would talk, my dear brother tree, my sister flower. Right? When Prabhupada was in Australia, he'd gone to that this monastery and the monks there were telling him like that about St. Francis. And when Prabhupada heard that, he said, ah, real God consciousness. Prabhupada was appreciating that vision to see God consciousness, to see God in all living entities and to see them all, parts and parcels, as revealed here in this verse, that they're all serving the Lord. You know, we, we don't allow dogs in the temple, but they're also devotees. They're also we give them prasadam, so many do the dogs in the dam, right? Somebody asked me recently, I was giving class, they said, is it all right to feed dogs meat? And so I, told, I said, well, I said, we have dogs in the dam, we don't feed any of them meat. They, they don't get any meat here, but there's still dogs here. Oh, because in the purport, it was in Sri Shopanishad, so there's, Prabhupada says there in the purport that if a dog or tiger, if they kill another living entity, they don't get any karma. So the dog can kill something to eat. 
So then she, the lady asked me, is it all right to feed them meat? Do I get karma if I feed them meat? So I said, yes, because you're buying the meat. You're having somebody kill an animal for you so you can feed the dog. If the dog wants to eat, he has to go and kill it himself. Let him go and kill the creature himself. But they don't need to do that. They can get prasadam, you can give them prasadam. They can eat. If they're hungry enough, they'll eat rice. Even the tiger. Uh, that, what's, what's the name of that youngest son of Bhaktivinoda Thakur? The one... Huh? What was it? Ah, Lalit Prasad, right. Lalit Prasad, right, the youngest son of Bhaktivinoda. Uh, so Shamsundar was telling, Shamsundar Prabhu, a proper disciple, he had gone there and they met Lalit Prasad. He'd gone with Prabhupada. So he was talking to L Lalit Prasad and he saw that place where he was living, it's quite remote. And he asked him, he said, do you ever get any wild animals come here? And so he said, oh yeah, he said, Recent, a few years ago there was a famine here. And so the people were really hungry. He said, at that time a tiger came. And the tiger came, walked in, walked right past me and went and it had half the bag of rice. He had half a bag of rice and then left. <laughs> Quite interesting, you know, the, the, the tiger, you know, usually tigers like human blood, you know, but anyway, he went for the rice. <laughs> he had the rice. <laughs> huh? <laughs> interesting. Okay, so the point is, you know, everybody moving and non-moving, they, they need their food according to their ability, according to their capacity. They find some way to eat. And the, the same, we also find, according to our capacity, we find the means to serve Krishna. We want to do something nice for the service of Krishna, Someone's doing in a very small way and somebody's doing in a very huge way. You know, I'm sure like Bhaktibringa Govinda Maharaj, Indra Jumna Maharaj, Sachinanda and Swami, you know, they, when they do kirtan, very big, you know, big way. Many people are attracted, so powerful. You know, other people, they're also chanting Hare Krishna and it's also pure chanting may not be so attractive. I heard when Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada was leaving the world, he asked a disciple to sing for him. But he asked the disciple, he knew he doesn't sing good, but he, he knew him to be a good devotee, pure devotee. He didn't mind the quality of the singing, but he was concerned about the devotion, the devotional mood. So that's important, you know. Devotion, we talk about devotion, the attitude, the mood to give pleasure to Krishna. Yeah. And just like the gopis, how did the gopis please Krishna the most? Because they had that mood to give everything, to satisfy everything for Krishna. Although they're simple village women, but Krishna was so captivated by them that he said, Naparayeham. I can never repay you for what you've done for me. Okay, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji's, some comments, discussion, anything? everyone serving Krishna except himself. Except himself. Hare Krishna. 
Uttama Adhikari sees everyone serving Krishna except himself. But uh, how does he see, you know, someone's obviously not serving Krishna, just doing their daily life. How does, how does he see that they're serving Krishna but he's not serving Krishna? How does he see other people who are obviously not serving Krishna? Hmm. Well, my, according to pur pur Prabhupada's purport here, he mentions that other, you know, some are serving Krishna directly and Prabhupada talks about the highest service is in Vrindavan. You go to Vrindavan and directly serve Krishna there. Other people are serving Krishna indirectly through the the Bahiranga Shakti, through the material energy. It's Krishna's energy. It's all Krishna. Just like Prabhupada said, this is the spiritual world. For the pure devotee, this is the spiritual world. There's no material world. He sees everything in relation to Krishna. So there's no question of the material world, because material world means separate from Krishna. But the pure devotee sees everything in relation to Krishna. So he's seeing everyone also engaged in service to Krishna. They're doing whatever they're doing, you know, they see it in relation to Krishna consciousness. Taking care of the family, oh, taking care of the child, taking care of the family, working. They see it all, service to Krishna. But this is Krishna's energy. They're working. They're working using Krishna's energy. They're also servants of Krishna. But they're just serving Maya, the, the indirect, the, the external potency of Krishna. So the mood is different, the attitude is different. Just like, you know, devotees can be working in the office or in the factory, and Prabhupada says they may be the, a, a, a devotee can be working in the job, he can be the, the highest renunciate, he can be the greatest renunciate because he sacrifices his hard earned salary for the service of Krishna. So he's the greatest renunciate. But he's doing the same job as any other person working in the company. There's many other people working in the company. They're not, serv they're not sacrificing directly for Krishna, but they're using it for their family, they're using it for their country, they're using it for their body, and their, their family, their body. That's all part of Krishna, right? It's all Krishna's. The body is given by the grace of Krishna. It's Krishna's body. So that the pure devotee, Uttamadikari, he sees in that way that everyone is serving Krishna. In the, in the Bhagavad Gita, where it's, it's talking about the wise man, he, the, the, the one who is equipoise, eh? Samadarshani, uh, the, he sees the, the Brahman, the, the dog, the dog eater, the elephant, all on the same platform as serving Krishna according to their karma. They've got that particular body because, you know, that's, they're serving the laws of Krishna. So it, he sees everything like that. It, they're, they're all serving Krishna according to capacity, like you're saying. But the, then philosophically, you can see, understand that, that they are serving Krishna indirectly according to the modes of nature. But the ultimate Adhikari, does he think they're actually devotees? Does he think they're actual devotees? Does, does he think they're actually devotees? Well, it doesn't say that. I, I don't think Uttamadi Adhikari sees them exactly like devotees. He says everyone's a devotee except me. Well, it doesn't mean that, you know, but what does it mean to be a devotee? It, does, it doesn't mean, you know, because you don't have neck beads, because you don't have tea like, you're not a devotee, because you don't chant Hare Krishna, you're not a devotee. But the, the, they're saying, do, they do service, everyone is serving Krishna. That's the, I, the point which is made. They're doing service for Krishna. Are they, are they saying that? They're, are they thinking that? Because obviously, I appreciate your, 
your example of the people in the factory, <coughs> he's doing an ordinary job, but he's actually doing it for Krishna. But persons who are, are not, you know, they're demon atheists or whatever, they're, they're just doing it for their own sense of advocation. <coughs> and, but does he still see those people as devotees? Or? What do you say, Rajendra Nandan? Thank you for a wonderful class and for being the inspiration for wonderful conversation. Wonderful. Two things came to mind when the question was asked by Pankajangri Prabhu. One, as you said, that they see Krishna everywhere, within their heart and in everything and everyone. The way they're able to do that is because they have love for Krishna. So they can't help but see Krishna everywhere and in everyone. In part, it's difficult to understand because we don't have a clue about love of Godhead. Only those who have it can understand it. Right. But the nature of love of God is that one thinks he's not a devotee and that he has no qualification to offer service to Krishna. And in that humility, he also sees others as much better than him. Pair that with he sees them, he sees Krishna in them, and they're serving Krishna. He sees Krishna in everything and everywhere. So in this way, he thinks they're all devotees. They're all serving Krishna, everyone. But somehow or other, I've been left out. Please, please. And he miserably or humbly, you know, yearns and begs. And that's what really captures Krishna, that mood that we're talking about. And then when they come down to the Madhyam platform, Srila Prabhupada said, quoting that verse, uh, Samaham Sarabhuteshu, my, equal, my equanimity, my equal vision is that I want to preach to everybody. Everyone, like you were, a very nice point in the class. The mood is we should be inclusive and everybody, according to their capacity, should be given a chance to serve Krishna. So that was Prabhupada's mood, as he said. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, I, I appreciate that without having love of God, it's difficult. Without being up there as the Nutta Adhikari, very, very hard for us to say. You know. Uh, in the purport, it appears that the form, the forms of the living entities are coming from the service. It appears like that. We would think. What I I, I couldn't the, get. You, you get a form according to the service you perform. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, f the form of the living entity is according to their service. Yeah, but generally, often we hear and say that it's already fixed. The sroop is already fixed. The form is already fixed. But here it's indicating the, f the form becomes determined by the service, service attitude. Mm. One may receive a form according to the way one worships the Lord in the material world. All living entities are serving Krishna in different ways, but they are, but they are Krishna conscious. So all living entities are serving Krishna in different ways, but when they are Krishna conscious, their service is fully manifested. Uh, in this nice example he gives, as a flower in the bud gradually fructifies and yields its desired aroma and beauty. So when the living entity comes to the platform of Krishna consciousness, the beauty of the real form comes into blossom. So when we come to the platform of pure Krishna consciousness, the beauty of his real form comes into blossom. So it, indica it appears to me that the form is developing because of the, from the attitude, the service attitude, the form will develop, rather than form, 
first. We develop the form by the service attitude. It appears so from this. Yeah, it, it de definitely appears like that. But the service attitude will, will be also influenced by our swarup, right? Our swarup, our particular nature will inspire us in, with a particular service attitude. And with that service attitude, then that body will develop a particular way. Yeah, it's the... So the service actually becomes a medium to express one's love for Krishna, however way he serves him, whatever. But the service is the the uh, what's the, word? the means to express our love for Krishna. Without service, actually, we cannot express ourselves. So we're expressing ourselves, and that will determine the. the the attitude that we have will determine the form, or the form will become a form will become manifested according to our attitude. Yes, definitely, I agree that this definitely the the, the form the this will be inspired to, to take up a particular service. Sometimes people come to Krishna consciousness and, you know, they really want to do one particular service, but they're given another service, you know. You know, like somebody, they really want to be a pujari, I, but they get told, you know, you know you're a good collector, we've got to have Sankirtan, you've got to go on Sankirtan, you know. Yeah, but they, they, they really feel much more inspired to be pujaris. But anyway, the, the temple really wanted them to go out and sang kirtan. You go out and sang kirtan. You go and sang kirtan, sang kirtan. Then after years of going and sang kirtan, finally you get your chance to become a pujari. You know, you, you, Krishna arranges, you know, that that desire is actually fulfilled. So, uh, it's, of course, it will, must be some something that Swarup must be influencing there. I know we're not going to resolve this issue. This is something we'll realize when the <laughs> when we get there. But this is a question along the lines because it's two schools of thought. We have our eternal Swarup, and Prabhu is saying this purport is communicating to him that according to your desire and your service that your form will manifest accordingly. So I, I ask a question that leans on this side that Janani Prabhu is saying. Do not everybody accepts what I'll, I'll say. I think you will. But are we all originally Krishna conscious entities? That's a yes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do we all, not, everybody, not every devotee will agree with this statement, but do, were we with Krishna in his Leela originally? Prabhupada says that, doesn't he? Isn't that the official ISKCON institutional Siddhanta? Yeah, once we were originally Krishna conscious. That we were with Krishna in his Leela and we fell down. That's, our, that's the official ISKCON Siddhanta. Mm -hmm. So some devotees, I already said, will not agree with that. Some devotees will. But if we accept we were originally Krishna conscious and with Krishna in his Leela, then how is it that that sarut manifests for the majority of conditioned souls who become sadhana siddhas, etc.? They go back to Godhead in this material world. How is it that the majority of them go to Vaikuntha, not reawakening or not regaining their Krishna, uh, uh, their Vrindavan Vasi sarut? It's a question. I put it out there for consideration. Well, even they go to Vaikuntha, they can go on from Vaikuntha to Goloka, right? They don't need to just stay in Vaikuntha. That's so very rare. Basically, you say it doesn't happen because they're so satisfied. They have no inclination whatsoever to take up any type of service or worship any other form of the Lord. That's according to Briyat Bhagatam Rita. Mm -hmm. It's possible. 
Yes, when they get to come with Lord Chaitanya and join him, then in his association, the Sankirtan movement, those sometimes the prominent devotees, they get to change. Or interestingly enough, they may be allowed to have both uh, eternal forms in Vaikuntha and in Vrindavan. We certainly can say with assuredness because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said some devotees have eternal forms in service with Lord Chaitanya in Mayapur and with Krishna and Radha in Vrindavan. They have simultaneously both forms. So that's definitely there and it's a possibility with the Vaikuntha Vasis in Gora Leela, Bhama Leela reawakening or being given Radha Krishna Seva, Vrindavan Vasi Bhakti. So anyway, I thought I would put that, it's logic that I'm using in terms of the Sarup, but I thought I would throw it out there for contemplation. Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> Devotee's questions online, is it? Yes. Our most respectful obeisances unto Lotus Feet of Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful class. We are all your faithful fans. And Krishna give us different energies or capacities because of our own desires. And then sometimes we are really hankering to do devotional service. But as a new devotee, I am feeling I cannot do anything. Whatever service I see, I want to do. But then my energy is diverted. Then I cannot successfully to do anything. So how can I find out I have a specific capacity to serve? And then I can concentrate my, my, all my being, my, my energy, and to, engage, to be engaged in this aspect from Sitala Devi Dasi. How can I find out that I have a particular propensity or, mm, or swarupa almost <laughs> and develop that capacity well you have to be more focused on devotional service Sitala Madhaji who asked this question has been a devotee only a few years recently got initiated and she's wondering what's her swarup, you know, what's her real propensity she wants to cultivate that for going back to Godhead. I think you have to be a little more uh, <laughs> willing to take up whatever service is available, do whatever is required. This is the point that in our Krishna consciousness movement, just simply do what's required, take up every opportunity for service and every situation don't think what's suitable for you and what's not suitable just be grateful that you have the opportunity to serve and while you're a young woman use your energy for the service of Krishna do as much active service as you can keep yourself fully engaged in whatever way is required. It may be making garlands, it may be cooking and cleaning, it may be managing, it may be book distribution. Just do everything. Learn everything. Prabhupada wanted everybody, especially do Sankirtan, family business, do Sankirtan. But he said, you should know everything. And Prabhupada was playing with Madanga, right? He said, what was it? He said, uh, he said, my father wanted this. He never wanted me to be worldly man. He said, no everything. <laughs> you know, Prabhupada could do everything. Cooking, playing Madanga expert, harmonium expert, managing expert. You know. So, learn everything. Do everything. Don't be picking and choosing. Oh, no, I can't do this. This is not my rasa with Krishna. I have to do something. <laughs> Question continued from same devotee. She said, 
what is a real devotion? What is the beginning of real devotional service? It begins from our first time of chanting the holy name, the first time of honoring Prasad, or only after the initiation. Then we can start our devotional service. All the devotional services done before initiation can also be counted as our spiritual bank balance. Please, Maharaj, um, remove my bewilderment. Thank you. Yes, I would say your devotional service begins from the chanting of Hare Krishna. As soon as you start chanting Hare Krishna, you're beginning your spiritual bank account. So initiation will help, but as soon as you begin chanting Hare Krishna and the service you do prior to initiation, you'll get the credit of it. It's not a waste of time. Mm hmm. Okay. China Dimon, yes. Hare Krishna. So it said that uh, uh, as soon as person chants the holy name, immediately he his sins disappears. Everything he starts devotional service. But also we hear that if you hear from um, not proper devotee or some. Some kind of offender, or so it's not uh, um, acting in the same way, uh, holy name. So it, it's very, it's, is it uh, very important to hear from proper source, or because people around the world now they sing so many mantras, Hare Krishna, also everywhere, and uh, do they also start their devotional service because they can hear from some yogi, some in other people, not as devotees, for example. In this case, they also get this um, impulse to start devotional service. Or so is it important to hear from a bona fide source? Because so many other mantras and different things are going around. So does it make any difference? Well, it does make a difference. Prabhupada says, milk touched by the lips of the serpent will have a poisonous effect. I remember there used to be one uh, theatrical performance in London. On the, there was a theatre presentation called Hair. And in that Hair uh, theatre show, they chanted Hare Krishna. They actually chanted Hare Krishna. And, you know, young people singing and dancing, and they, the, the, it was a, a musical, you know, a musical show. And but within the musical show, there was chanting of Hare Krishna. And Prabhupada said, oh, he said, they, we told Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, they have got the Hare Krishna mantra from me, from us, from our movement. So he said, this is good. So he said, everybody who goes to that show and who hears Hare, chanting Hare Krishna, they're benefited. They're very far, they're, they're beginning their spiritual life because they're hearing the mantra from a bona fide source. Because he said, I brought Maha Mantra here, they took it from us, so it's a good source. No harm. But if you get it from Mayavadi or something, then it's a problem. If you get it from some bogus rascal, some other people who are not devotees, it's not good. So generally we want to hear from the devotees. Sampradaya vihina ye mantraste nishpala mata. If you get the mantra which is not from the authorized disciplic succession, it will not bear any fruit. Thank you for a wonderful straightforward answer. Uh, in understanding there will not be fruit or there will not be result, the, 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 the desired goal is purity in devotional service, chanting the Shudanam, the pure name of Krishna. There's also the statements that have balance on the other side where Srila Prabhupada said even the Sahajiyas, who you could say are poisonous snakes, they engage in so many activities that are sinful and uh, inappropriate and will not give you purity or help you go back to Godhead. But Srila Prabhupada said even they get some benefit 
benefit and eventually, maybe not in that life, but anyone who's chanting even Nam Apara, there is some touch, there is some connection that the Lord recognizes and that goes into a Sukriti account, you know, the Agyata Sukriti. Mm -hmm. So the, the poison has its effect, but also the connection, the Lord recognizing, oh, eventually that does, the, the Agyata Sukriti accumulate. So in some lifetime, because of that, they'll uh, get the benefit of meeting a Vaishnav who is in Sampradaya, etc. I just thought I would make okay. mention of that part. Interesting point. Thank you. Okay, Hare Krishna. Oh, hi, Yofu. I just remember just yesterday or day before yesterday, Indradivna Maharaj, he gave a class on 12 forests in Vrindavan and especially about the demons. Maybe Prabhu, if you want, you can listen because it's, uh, uh, my husband told me, he explains uh, why such a great souls, they see the demons better because he, um, Indradivna Maharaj, he do research and he said all these demons practically they went to Krishna no, no, at least to Vaikuntha or get liber gold liberation and uh, the great souls they they see that and they understand that these demons are already with Krishna I'm here but I, I, I don't know how to properly explain He's, it's all class about that uh, if you want to hear I can send you link about this understanding it's very interesting. I didn't hear properly, but something a little bit about. Where was the class? Uh, he is giving online classes oh. three times a week oh. about 12 Forest Raj now. And he describes many, many pastime stories with demons and the all previous lives of demons, how they became demons, actually all of them was practically devotees, just committed some offenses or interesting how they going back also then and connection to the question also some explanation but I cannot explain properly. <laughs> okay, I think we better stop. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Thank uh you. -huh.